This is the Jeff Horowitz Show on 97.1 The Big Talker. All right, I've got Representative Walt Blackman joining us. Uh, plus, we'll talk about Biden's latest bad idea. That The hits just keep coming. The Jeff Horowitz Show starts now. Yeah, Biden is just like hopping from one bad idea to the next. Uh, when one thing disintegrates on him, he just says, oh, I, we got another bad idea here. Uh, you know, the vaccine mandate's been falling apart on him. I, I wouldn't count it out, though, because it'll probably still have to go to the Supreme Court. But he's been getting dragged through the mud on that. Before that, it was the eviction moratorium. And, and I mean, on and on. Afghanistan, uh, his horrible handling of the economy. Uh, this guy has nothing. This guy, if failure was a sport, he would be getting a gold medal at this point. It's unbelievable. So Biden's latest genius idea that I want to get into is his call on the Federal Trade Commission to probe anti-consumer behavior by energy companies, according to him, as gas prices soar. That's a headline from CNBC. Uh, Anti-consumer behavior. Why don't they investigate their own administration? You want to talk about anti-consumer behavior? What would it cost you for that Thanksgiving turkey? What does it cost you to go buy groceries at the store? What's it cost you to go buy materials to build a house? What's it cost you to buy a house? What's it cost you for just about anything? It's all gone up. Uh, Biden is the king of anti-consumer behavior from his administration. Uh, If you're a landlord, you know, you had to deal with eviction moratoriums. If you run a business or if you're an employer, uh, employee, you have to get a, well, you don't have to now, but he wanted you to get vaccinated. So he's just messed up everything he's touched. So he is the the king of anti-consumer behavior behavior himself. He should be launching an investigation. Uh, I don't know if that'll happen, though. You should call up the FTC and say, hey, will you investigate me for for stupidity at this point? (laughs) Anyway, folks, welcome. Thanks for listening. Happy to be here with you today. Uh, Another jam-packed show for you. Uh, We do have Representative Walt Blackman coming up, and uh, he represents LD6. I think most of you know him. He's been on the show many, many times. We're going to get into... uh, really two sides of of the equation here because he is running for Congress in presumably Congressional District 1, which may become Congressional District 2 because they're still drawing these these lines. So I want to get into mandates and things like that and inflation with them. But on the Arizona side, because he, he'll be going down here in about two months to the beginning of the legislative session. And I think Governor Ducey, he should have called an emergency legislative session a long time ago, when it was apparent that all the bills that the legislature packed into the state budget to try to get through because of Ducey's, uh, what, what, what we call this, temper tantrum, uh, it, they all failed. So Ducey vetoed 22 bills, and Carrie Lake brought this up on the show yesterday. If you missed my interview with Carrie, uh, we were talking about this out-of-control Scottsdale School Board uh, or the board president in particular, who's no longer the president, who she said was, what, 26, 27-year-old guy living at home uh, with no kids in the school, running the school district. It was kind of weird. Uh, and hit this creepy dossier. Uh, we talked with Carrie Lake about that. Now Attorney General Brnovich has asked the FBI to investigate to see if there's any crimes committed here. We shall see. And we'll see if they take up that uh, that case. They may be busy doing uh, doing other things, I, I guess, nowadays. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But this this has got to stop. So we're going to talk with Representative Walt Blackman about how the legislature needs to step in. But the governor won't call an emergency session. The bills that would have protected Arizonans from critical race theory, uh, mask mandates and out of control schools, uh, a lot of things like that were all vetoed when the governor had a temper tantrum because the legislature wasn't listening to him. You know, he he spazzed out, vetoed them. Then in the end, the legislature had to put everything in the budget to try to get it to pass. Then the Supreme Court weighed in and said, nope. We, 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 uh, you can't do that. It's against the constitution. And all those bills went to, went to, went to wherever bills go to die. It's all because of Ducey because Ducey had a spaz attack. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't wait for another governor. I think unless we get like uh, what's her name, Katie Hobbs or, or somebody else who's going to drag Arizona to, uh, you know, where California is and New Mexico and all these states that have had lockdowns and shutdowns. And, and now their COVID cases are spiking. I don't hear the media talking about the COVID cases spiking. Do you? You don't hear much. You know, when Arizona spikes or Florida or Texas or any conservative state, they're, they're spazzing out about it. But uh, if it's, if it's uh, Detroit or city, you know, if, if it's, if it's uh, uh, Michigan, if it's, uh, it, what is it, Connecticut right now where people died in a nursing home that were fully vaccinated, you don't hear much about that. 
Anyway, but that's Joe Biden. He's uh, got a uh, 36% approval rating. Yeah, you, did you hear about this? 36% approval rating for Joe Biden. This was from Quinnipiac University. I always pronounce that wrong. Uh, 30, 36% approval. And they say what what people are saying is higher prices are changing spending. It has to do with prices and inflation. People, when it finally hits their pocketbook, when it finally hits their spending, people finally say, you know what? Maybe this Green New Deal isn't such a good idea. This is a little more money than I thought. When you shut down businesses and prices go up because there ain't enough labor and there ain't enough people producing enough goods and services, maybe that wasn't such a good idea after all. So people are starting to catch on, I hope. I don't know what's up with 36%. His approval rating should be like zero. <laughs> it's just, this is the worst president we've ever had. Anyway, folks, I'd love your comments. Uh, I'll get into his uh, latest push against the, the oil and gas companies at this point. Uh, we'll get into all that. Plus, I, I've got other news updates. We'll get to your comments today. Uh, you can email me a comment. Today's a good email day. And uh, Olivia and I plan on reading some of your comments about 530. If you're listening to the podcast, this may be after the show, after we get the pod- podcast published. It's about uh, 60, 60 minutes in or so. You can take a listen to comments if you sent an email. Email me, talkwithjeff at iCloud.com. Talkwithjeff at iCloud.com. First sponsor of the day is uh, Glenn Least at WT Wealth Management. And WT Wealth Management's investment committee draws from over a century of combined expertise to create their own in-house strategies that you can make part of your portfolio. Give Glenn Least a call to talk about these strategies at 928 928- 225-2474. There's no obligation. Call Glenn Least at 928-225-2474. That's 928-225-2474. Or you can contact Glenn by going to wtwealthmanagement.com. Okay, so like I said, Biden calls on the Federal Trade Commission to probe anti-consumer behavior by energy companies as gas prices soar. As you know, you were paying two bucks here, what, a year ago, 18 months ago. And then now you're paying, I don't know, upper threes, places in California and other, you know, blue states are paying four, five, six dollars a gallon in some places. It's gotten outrageous and it's affecting everybody's lives. It's going to affect shipping costs and we already have shipping problems and, and, and supply chain issues. Wait till you add the fuel surcharges to it. That, that's all going to start coming back. So he said this, President Joe Biden, this according to CNBC, is asking the Federal Trade Commission to look into the behavior from energy companies as gas prices hover around a seven-year high. Here's here's a quote from the letter that he wrote, which I don't think he wrote, but whatever. Um, There's, quote, mounting evidence of anti-consumer behavior by oil and gas companies, the president said in a letter to the FTC. In August, the administration called on OPEC to boost production while also asking the FTC to monitor and address any illegal conduct at the pump. Well, I, what are they talking about here? L- listen, I don't know. It depends on what number you look at. $7 trillion, perhaps as high as $11 trillion was sprinkled in, showered in, uh, fire hosed into the U.S. economy over the past less than two years, 18 months or so. So you sprinkle in $11 trillion. Then government says, we've got a pandemic. You got to stay home. You got to stay home. We, we want to do quarantines. We want to do shutdowns. Don't go here. Don't go there. So they shut everything down. So stick with me here. Sprinkle $11 trillion into the system. Then tell people that normally go to work that produce the goods and services that you don't have to go to work anymore. We're going to take care of you. We've got all this money in the system. Then those people get money, three, ba- three um, stimulus checks plus Rental assistance. I told you the other day how Arizona DES, you know, through Governor Ducey's uh, so-called leadership, is doing commercials saying, "Hey, you can't pay your rent. You got to. You can't pay your rent because of COVID. Thirty five hundred dollars per month, up to like sixty three, sixty four thousand dollars. People are eligible for in rent plus utilities. This is absurd. Why would you go to work? So they're sprinkling all this money. So put pump in the money." Tell people they don't have to work. You don't have workers to produce goods and services, and they have money in their pockets. So more money 
purchases fewer goods and services. H- had they done nothing, had they, had they never said, don't go to work, uh, everybody just continued on. You know, they didn't do the shutdowns and all that. And they sprinkled $11 trillion. We would be facing this kind of inflation. It would be bad. But throw that kind of money on and tell people not to work and produce goods and services. You have more money chasing less goods thus raising the price of all the goods. It's really quite simple. Don't really need an investigation here. Now, if you talk about the oil and gas companies, remember when they shut everything down, March, April, May, remember the, I reported on it. I'm sure you remember this. For at least a month, it may have been two months, futures contracts on oil went negative. So you got all these, these, these companies that were producing uh, you know, oil, natural gas, whatever, uh, in places like North Dakota and all these small independent folks. The, 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 the price of oil collapsed, so they went out of business. So eventually the economy came back on, but all these people were gone. So there's less producers now, and there's more demand than, than there was before for, for oil and, and, and petroleum products. So do the math on this. You don't need an investigation. Then Biden gets into office, and what's he do? He shuts down pipelines, shuts down pipelines, and then he says, you know what? Uh, we're also canceling any new exploration on federal lands. You're not going to get that, uh, that, that, that oil or gas lease or whatever. It's not going to happen. No more exploration. Really? I mean, I guess a third of the people are still sticking by this president. So, uh, you know, people, there's a sucker born every second. But seriously, come on. So he stumbles from one thing to the next. And here we are in the midst of an inflationary spiral now that he's clueless, absolutely, utterly clueless to get us out of. This is simple stuff. I think it is. I, <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it other than that. Uh, but if Biden wants to talk about it, uh, he, he, he can chime in on the Just Wireless listener line. Love to hear from him. Love to hear from you, too. Uh, leave your comments today or send me a text, 877-971-3971, 877-971-3971. Uh, you can also drop me an email, and Olivia and I will try to get the emails right about 530. Please send an email right now to talkwithjeff, talkwithjeff at iCloud. Dot com. All right, sponsor, this segment of the show is Timberline Firearms and Training. And I actually have their uh, November newsletter in front of me. Uh, first of all, I want you to keep in mind uh, right now that uh, Timberline has uh, Ladies Night tonight. Uh, so you can get 10 bucks. It's a great, great deal here. 10 bucks range fee, one free rental, and a free target. Uh, that's every Thursday. Plus, they've got some great training opportunities. Uh, let's see. They've got uh, December 1st, the First Shots program. Don't forget about December 4th. Santa is visiting from 11 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Uh, you've got the Intermediate Handgun Training, December 5th. The point being here, they've got a lot of training opportunities for you, uh, and it also be a great Christmas present for someone. Give them a call. Book some training opportunities, 928-526-7900. That's 928-526. 526-7900. You can also take a quick drive. They're only five minutes north of the Flagstaff Mall. Pick up a gift certificate, a gift card for somebody for Christmas or, or uh, accessories, Liberty safes, all that. Wrap up a big Liberty safe. I mean, it may weigh a lot and you'd be like, well, I can't move this thing. Wrap that bad boy up and put it under the Christmas tree or put the Christmas tree on top of it. That'd be a great present. Timberline Firearms and Training, just five minutes north of the Flagstaff Mall. Okay, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk with Representative Walt Blackman. Uh, we've got a lot to cover with him uh we'll get into rittenhouse here later we'll get into your comments as well and a lot more folks hang tight don't go anywhere back in a minute you're listening to the jeff orovitz show to the Jeff Orvid Show. Be part of the program by calling 877-971-3971. All right, we've got Representative Walt Blackman coming up here in just a second. A lot of ground to cover. And if you've got any comments, send me an email today. And my plan is about 5.30-ish, the last segment of the show. Uh, I'm going to bring Olivia in. We'll read, uh, I plan on at least, uh, get to some of your email comments 
And the email is brought to you by Just Wireless. Email me at talkwithjeff, talkwithjeff at iCloud.com. Uh, this portion of the show brought to you by Gutter Helmet of Northern Arizona, the number one gutter protection company in the world. And if you don't want to clean those gutters, you don't want to go up on that ladder and pick out the pine needles or the leaves and all that stuff, uh, then you should call or text Carl the Gutter Helmet Man right now at 928-318-6555. That's 928-318-6555. All right, I'm happy to welcome back to the program buddy of mine, Representative Walt Blackman. He currently represents Legislative District 6, which may become something else. Who the heck knows? He's also running for Congress. Yeah. Walt, you're running for Congress in some district, but we don't know what district because of the, the, the process going on. That, that's kind of tough to try to... You know, you're campaigning, yeah, but where do you campaign exactly? Well, actually, uh, thanks for having me on the show, and thanks to your listeners for supporting me. Um, I, I campaign in the original lines of uh, Congressional District 1 uh, because it will be somewhat uh, similar to that. We may, we'll may lose some areas. However, it's better to uh, go big and, and campaign in those areas where you know um uh, uh, your, my, you know, your support is yeah. and rather than to not hit those places and you have to try to make it up in the last, uh, the last 12 months. So we've been, we've been, uh, really knocking doors, talking to people and then just getting out, getting out our, our, you know, our campaign message, um, throughout the whole district and in some, some parts, uh, you know, other, other, other parts of the state. So we're having a great time and meeting people and traveling the state and the district and it's fun. Yeah, and CD1, which is what you're currently in and what I'm in and what many listeners are in, um, that becomes like CD2 under the proposed maps, and it actually becomes even bigger. But it, sure. cu- it cuts further north of um, of Tucson, I believe. It cuts out some areas. Yeah, yeah so more yeah. than likely, I'm guessing you're going to be in CD2. It, it is interesting, though, Walt, because you don't actually have to live in the, let me get your take on this. You don't have to live in the district for Congress that you are running in or, or that you represent. Do you have to live in the state? I mean, could someone just helicopter in and just what's the process if you come from out of state and like how quickly can you run for Congress or can anyone just drop in and run? Sure. Yeah. See, that's the problem with the congressional race is that uh, we allow or the law allows people to come from um, out of the district or out of the state. Mm. And they can come and run in our district. The problem with that is we have some folks that, for example, we've got an individual that is, uh, has applied to run in the CD2. Uh, he just registered in July uh, to vote in Arizona. He comes from California, and he lives in an urban area. CD2 is a rural area. I mean, you know that. We know that. We have different issues than, than uh, urban. We have Definitely different issues than the great state of Maricopa, yeah. um, and that is, and, and that's a microcosm of what's going on across the state and 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 the country. Um, and then we see that in our in our senatorial races, uh, particularly here in Arizona. People have come in, um, they see that it's a good seat to to win in, um, and then they run in the seat. Then we have uh, we have the same issues that uh, we're having now under Democrat control um, from these Republicans who think that they know the issues um, for the particular districts. I'd like to see uh, uh, if folks want to run in different districts that they live in those districts. That's what the legislative districts do. Um, and it's because you are tied to your community and you know the issues of the community and the people you elect know the issues and you're not just electing some helicopter person in yeah. who wants a title in their name in front of their name and they think it's cool to I, be a congressman i think uh, i think walt they they smell the blood in the water i'm looking at a poll from biden and his approval rating is like 36 percent because he's doing such wonderful things and he goes from one blundering dumb idea to the next now he's yeah he, now gas prices are up by the way because it's just all price fixing it has nothing to do with printing trillions of dollars and shutting down production but, but what do yeah. i what do i know Walt, well, yeah right? <laughs> yeah what do we know i know again, it, yeah, yeah believe the government or don't i don't believe my lying eyes oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 we would know we would know we yeah it, it, the it, gas prices you know exactly yeah, and it, and it, but I think they sense blood in the water, so people are 
looking at Arizona, hey, I can run in that state because let's look at what's currently CD1. Let's assume you're in CD1 for right now and running for that for Congress, Walt. Uh, last night I got a, a call from um, from Tom O'Halloran regarding his, um, it was like a town hall on the phone where you could actually call, but I was so done. It was after the show. I was like, I don't really do this. I can't, I don't have the patience. <laughs> but that this district may be a 9% Republican advantage going forward. And you got Democrat Tom O'Halloran who just signed on to the one point two trillion, not one trillion. It's one point two. I think it's really like one point five trillion infrastructure deal. Oh yeah. And then the Build Back Better mm-hmm. plan coming up. That's maybe upwards of three, four trillion. Who the heck knows what this thing's going to cost? Uh, he's he's signed on to all this crap that thirty six percent approval rating Biden uh, tells him to do. I think there's a real opportunity for this district to finally flip Republicans. So I think people are sensing that. And hey, why not go to Arizona and and and, and run it? Yeah, I mean, with O'Halloran, it's bad enough that he votes 98% with Pelosi. Um, and then now he votes 100% on the Biden administration uh, agenda. And we know that the uh, infrastructure bill that, uh, you know, staggered across, you know, the finish line. Mm-hmm. I can't believe some Republicans actually signed on to that. I know. 40% of that is a Green New Deal. They're, you know, billions of dollars are going into these charging stations. They're going to build 10,000 charging stations. Some of them are going to be on the Navajo Nation, but the Navajo Nation doesn't have electricity or water. That makes about as much sense as jumping off a roof, (laughs) thinking that there's a net down there. So that's the problem that we see with O'Halloran. The the other problem, the other problem uh, that I see when we're when we're talking about these folks, you know, you you mentioned that the the water is red and and sharks in water, and you know, let's go get them, let's go to Arizona. Uh, How about you defend where you're at? How about we grow conservative principled parties and and, and and responsible spending um, and run in those districts where you live um, instead of jumping ship because it's an easier it's an easier run mm-hmm. you know that's why that's why a lot of uh, we have we have California that has turned blue there was a, there was a time when California was red so so we we have we have issues in a lot of and, and some of these in some of these states and and counties and districts that need to be fixed at at there where they're at but we're not going to get them fixed and we're going to continue to keep flipping back and forth when we're not staying in our own foxholes you know fighting our own fights and fighting in our own silos yeah. you know let me jump let me jump over to your neck of the woods because it's easier well, yeah, uh, to do I want it to get in my in office versus uh, because you, i want to get in yeah, office. and well you live in a yeah. small community in in the white mountains i think pretty much everyone listening is in smaller communities. I'm in the, the big city here of Flagstaff. I mean, that's, you know, that's how small the communities are uh, where, well, yeah. where Flagstaff's the, the, the metropolis, you know what I'm saying? And, and, yeah. and Prescott yeah. and they don't understand rural Arizona. That's the disconnect. That's why every, that's why they think, Hey, I'm going to pass the green new deal, Walt, because you, you can just go to the charging station with the electric car you don't own. Uh, and, and that's 40 miles away maybe. And that's why 90, you look at the land mass of, of, of the country and it's all red because half of us are living in those m- more spread out rural areas and we have a totally yeah, different absolutely. view than than uh, ocasio cortez in the big city where you just put a, a charging port on the corner of the concrete jungle yeah i don't know anyone on my street that has an electric car let alone a charging station yeah uh, and and snowflake i just don't i have not seen one if there's if there one is there it's like chasing the you know the lucky charm rainbow <laughs> And finding a treasure at the end of it—it's just not in rural. <laughs> However, yeah. you know we we we've got folks in office, and we and I've talked about that with Tom O'Holler and folks that want to come in office from other states and other districts that will vote for those types of programs that don't help rural Arizona. Yeah, but they think it's a good deal because it's you know well you know it's it's charging stations. It's the, it's the wave of the future. And it sounds okay. nice and green. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, do you know the distance between here and trying to get to Payson? Yeah. There are no charging stations <laughs> on the rim. There's not much Those of anything. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing on the, there's a couple of elk, you know, and you're, <laughs> however, we we're having these folks come in and make and, and vote on these types of policies Yeah. because it's, because it's good. It may be good for places, places, uh, like uh, Phoenix or, or, or some of these other big places or Tucson or old, some places in Oral Valley because those are bigger cities. However, in small towns that, that you and I are accustomed to, you're not going to see that. 
And so we are wasting taxpayer dollars by doing those, by voting on those types of agendas and, 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 and programs. And when Republicans jump into races that are not in their district, they are no better than, de- than the Democrats that are in those seats because they don't know what they're doing because they don't know the district. Yeah, they don't know. And that, right. and, yeah. Well, let's uh, hit on this some more. I got to take a quick break. I do want to just leave you with this because I want to switch to a legislative session coming up when we come back. Yeah. But I think sure. what you said, though, really is resonating with me and should resonate with a lot of people, especially our, our friends on uh, Native American nations, Navajo Nation, Hopi Nation, et cetera, that so many areas don't have basic infrastructure and you want to bring charging stations when there isn't even that infrastructure there. Bring uh, yeah. electrification where it's needed, water where it's needed first. It, it's baffling. They, they've they've yeah. had control of this area, the Democrats, for so long, and still they don't have basic basic infrastructure, and they want to bring in sure. some kind of high-tech infrastructure. All right, well, when we come back, let's talk about uh, the legislative session coming up, so just, just hang tight for a minute. Folks, sponsor this segment of the show is Desert Gold Exchange, and if investing in gold is new to you, call Desert Gold Exchange for a free investor's kit. You just got to mention that you heard about it here on the show. Uh, give them a call and they'll send it up to you. And uh, now is a pretty good time to be looking into this and seeing if it's right for you. Call Desert Gold Exchange at 888-852-4343. 888-852-4343. That's Desert Gold Exchange at 888-852-4343. Hang tight. Back more with Walt Blackman. listening to the Jeff Orovid show. You're listening to the Jeff Orovid show. Be part of the program by calling 877-971-3971. All right, hang on just a second. We'll get back with Representative Walt Blackman. We'll, we'll switch gears to the upcoming legislative session and some serious things that need to happen to protect uh, folks here in this state, especially in our education. Uh, hey, I was at HomeCo this morning, and uh, I actually went there on Butler Avenue in Flagstaff. I had to get some nails and some wood glue and a few other things, but they've got just about everything you need for all your projects. But they've also got uh, a super easy way to shop and get your, your lumber, get your, your, your supplies that you need for your projects. Go to myhomeco.com. Homeco is spelled H-O-M-C-O. Myhomeco.com, the friendliest place in town. Just got friendlier. Free in town, same day delivery. Save time. Shop online at myhomeco.com. Uh, all right, we're talking with Representative Walt Blackman, represents currently LD6, running for Congress. We'll just call it CD1 for, for right now for the uh, Republican nomination. Walt, I got to tell you, I am uh, looking forward to the legislative session beginning in just, I don't know, under two months. I know it, I, yeah. I shouldn't be, I mean, because anytime the government's in session, you always got to <laughs> be a little on guard. Yeah. But there's some serious. Yeah, you got to hold your breath. Yeah, right. There's some serious business that needs to be taken care of. And let me just quick background and then let me know if I'm painting this picture right. You guys had a bunch of bills to protect people, their their kids' education against mask mandates, yep. vaccine mandates, critical race theory. Uh, we now see out of control school districts doing crazy stuff around the state. And the bills failed because of a couple of rhino Republicans. Then the plan was, let's get it in the budget. So you pass the budget, you cram all this other stuff in there. Fast forward, Supreme Court rules that you can't do that. So all these bills to protect people from mandates were, were thrown out, basically. And I will back up one second. A lot of these bills could have been passed had it not been for Governor Ducey having a temper tantrum and vetoing a bunch of bills. So now we're stuck. Sure. Parents are stuck. You don't go back till January. What's the prospect of having standalone laws against critical race theory, mask mandates, vaccine mandates, you, you name it? Uh, what does that look like when you go back in January? Well, first of all, um, I've, I've already taken an initiative, uh, an aggressive initiative to be able to, to go out and talk to uh, parents, talk to uh, school officials who are not in favor of the CRT, talk to the people in the community, and also get uh, my bill folders prepped to uh, actually do a preemptive strike against some of these some of these 
uh, unconstitutional pieces of uh, law that the uh, school boards and, and you see kind of sneak in after the Supreme Court ruling. Um, so my initiatives, uh, we're talking about the three top of, of the folks that I have spoken to people about is the election, election laws, we know that, school choice, and also uh, our borders, our border uh, issues that aren't going to go anywhere anytime soon. Uh, with the school choice issues, what we need to be able to do is we need to increase the level of opportunity for school choice. We have a good school choice program um, here in Arizona already. However, with the mask mandate and with uh, with uh, CRT and all the other garbage you see that is going in some of these schools that, that the left, they're pushing through an ideology. And by brainwashing our kids, parents need to have more of an option. And one of those options that I want to create, I see a lot of parents, or after I spoke to a lot of parents, they are taking the option of homeschooling. Yeah. What I want to see is more money following that back, backpack to homeschooling. We see it follow the backpack when they're going to charter schools or they're going to a private school. And of course, when they're going to the public schools. However, there is a big disconnect when uh, money is not following the backpack when we're talking about homeschools. I'm writing legislation to where parents who, who, who homeschool their children because there's really, it's kind of hard to even go anywhere. Um, uh, and, and, they, and they can mandate and mitigate their own situation. Mm -hmm. More money go into that backpack that they are that they are being taught at home. That, that, that's what it's going to take. Uh, we're going to see more and more parents pull their kids out of school and do online schooling. Number one, so they can monitor it and do that. The the other uh, parts of the curriculum, um, in their living rooms and their in their in their home classroom. Um, and we need to be able to provide them funding to be able to do that. So I'll be I'll be working more on that. Uh, Before you yeah. move on, let's hit on that because this is one of my big topics that every time someone come from the legislature comes on or candidate for this office or that, it is school choice. Um, you know that uh, I had a uh, dealing with a charter school that eventually yeah. we had to pull my daughter out. And charter schools are just public schools that are just a fancy name, basically. And sure. <laughs> that's all yep. they've become. They're funded. So my daughter and my son wind up going to a, a private uh, Christian school. There's there's like, there's like not a lot of choices, actually, sure. in my area, in Flagstaff. So I have to yep. pay my property taxes, Walt. And then mm -hmm. I have to pay for the privilege of not going to that public school anymore. So I have to pay for the private school, which is not cheap. And most parents, many parents who have looked into this understand this. So there's two issues there. It's like, why am I paying for a school I'm not using? And the backpack of money is not following me to this private school. It should. I should have the option of of full choice. So that's, that's the first thing. I hope we can pass legislation, Walt, that um, gives people full freedom to carry that backpack of money uh, where they want. So are you proposing an expansion of the empowerment scholarship accounts, the, the vouchers? Would it be for all, or do you see this massively expanded? Let's start with that. I see, I see it's for all. So here's the deal. Um, and and um, I, I, I uh, wrote legislation last year that didn't, you know, I know this, this is, so, is going to sound crazy. You made a point about your, you're paying your property taxes and your property taxes are still going to the public schools and to the charter schools, and you had to pull your child out of that school because of something that was being taught or something was being forced on your child that goes beyond your beliefs and values. So my legislation is your dollars, follow your dollar, your, do your, your child's backpack. Yeah. So why are you having to pay property tax or school taxes when you're not using those resources? Now, the other side, the argument is going to say, well, if we don't pay property taxes, we're not going to have schools. Well, guess what? That's called competition. Yeah. That's called doing the things which your parents want you to do. Those parents want you to do in those communities to make sure that that child that they are sending to the school, your child that you're sending to the school, that that school is teaching the values that you expect. And that's what schooling is all about. It's not about we send the kids to school and, you know, it's a middle finger to the parents. And, yeah. oh, and by the way, you're still going to pay the child. You're going to pay uh, property tax. That's not how it works. No, it so be. I when we're when we're talking about expanding uh, these programs, I want to see a portion of the property taxes go to that parent where their where their kid goes. If you decide to teach your kid at home, guess what? The property taxes that you were paying goes into an account that goes to your kid. Okay, it doesn't go to the school. It doesn't go to the district. And we ensure that that money is going back into your 
school, homeschool that you're, that you're teaching your kids at. A lot of people aren't going to like that idea. However, it's called competition, and it's, and it's making sure that the values that you hold dear, that you want to teach your kids, are not being watered down by some of these institutions of brainwashing that we see not only around the state, but around the country. And, and, and Walt, I don't know if it's going to be looked at as a bad idea now anyway, because you got so many, and, and somebody said they don't like me using a, a certain word, so I'll say so many angry moms out there right now that are taking the political charge because these school districts have messed with their kids. Look at the Scottsdale example with this 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 weird creepy case of this guy doing this dossier on, on kids and parents. And now uh, it's being looked into yeah. or requested to look to sure. look into by, by law enforcement. We'll see what happens with that. But uh, I think is now is the time and hopefully something gets passed this legislative session. Let me give you a, one more small example of a, in case something doesn't get passed where the vouchers follow the kids, just sending your kid to private school right now, Walt, if you want to do a, a tax credit to your, to your kid, you can't do it. So, I, and I don't, and I don't know yeah. the exact number, but let's say you're doing a two thousand dollar tax credit to the school uh, where your kid goes to private school. Uh, you can't do it directly. You ha- somebody else has to do it, and you can't trade. The, it's 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 this convoluted. Why can't I just do, get the tax credit for my kid directly rather than going through some system that's set up? Sure, uh, it doesn't sure. make any and, and sense. That's big government right there, and that's people yeah. wanting to control your money. And and we already see that with the six hundred dollar and the low monitoring of the Democrats and the liberals, what they want to do. Your tax credit, you should be able to control that tax credit because it's your tax credit. Not, that's your tax credit. It's not the government. It's not the state. It's not the district. It's your tax credit. You should be able to control that. And we need to have bold legislation, just like you said, to do that. Now, you and I have been talking about this one, this this particular topic for years. Yeah, and, you know, We yeah. both have our kids in, 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 in public and in charter schools and um, and we both felt the pain, and and I certainly felt the pain when uh, the 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 situation that happened to your child. I mean, for for, for goodness' sake! I mean, really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I still can't believe that. Yeah. Uh, however, when we're talking about the legislation we're going to run, we're going to have some of those rhinos that hold out. Number one, we know that we're going to have some folks that think it's too it's it's a bridge too far to do these types of things that you and I are talking about. These types of of uh, programs and incentives and these agendas. Uh, for for uh, legislation, it's a bridge too far, and then we're going to have folks who just don't want to do it because they want to keep their seats. Our job is to represent our constituents, and our constituents now, particularly moms, are saying they are pissed off of what's going on with with their kids. Okay, so so we have to do something different to protect these children. We can't just protect the kids kids in the womb. We have to protect them outside of the womb. We have to protect them when they go to K through twelve. We have to make sure that we give them the tools to be able to be successful in life and that their values are not whitewashed or watered down while they're in these public schools or charter or private schools. Yeah. So that's my belief on that. No, yeah, it's, it's good. And, and we'll be there fighting with you for that if you're going to fight that, as you say you're going oh, to. Oh, no, I'm right? going to. So I know you will. Yeah, you know me too. I know you, you will. Know yeah, I, I know, I'm, I'm I know when you say you're fighting that, you're fighting that because you've you've yeah. received more flack than most people at the legislature on on these on these issues. And um, yeah. I, I, if you switching hats real quick, if you and, you're, and Walt, Representative Walt Blackman's with us, folks, who's also running for Congress, if you got to D.C., and I'm asking all candidates on the federal side, uh, would you be in favor of getting rid of the Department of Education? Absolutely. Okay. Good. They are they are a waste of taxpayer dollars. We we put billions of dollars into the Department of Education, and if you know your Constitution, and I know you know your Constitution. This question is to you. However, you know your Constitution. The states are responsible for educating K through twelve, not the federal government. They want to federalize uh, public schools. That's what they have done. The Obamas did it with the Common Core. They're trying to keep some of that, bring some of that back. The Department of Education has no play in the education system of state. Uh, so it should be abolished. And, a lot, and all that money we're spending to the Department of Education can go to other programs like, ah, school choice. Yeah. What, a, what a novel concept. Well, yeah, and I just want a school for me. Look, if you want a critical race theory, mask wearing, vaccine mandate school, 
okay, just advertise that. Where's my choice, though? I, w- I don't yeah. want that stuff. So just be clear. You can all go to that school, and I'll go, you know, I, I want the school that's my values. What's the problem here? You're, why do you want to force exactly. your values on me? I don't get it, Walt. Are, it, are you so weak in your values that you feel you got to force it on me? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're, 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 they're forcing it, and they're doing it through brainwashing our kids. And by the time our kids get through K-12, they're going into college. They come home for Christmas break. You're like, who are you? Yeah. And who stole my child? <laughs> I'm in that situation. Well, I, my, yeah. my, my, she's not listening. She's not here. But my, my daughter, yeah. is, um, she is uh, off in college, right? And she's, she's uh, she, she, maybe, hopefully she doesn't come back and say, Dad, did you know this? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how the world wor- works. So yeah, any, anyway, yeah. Um, look, we'll keep fighting this. And you know that I will be there fighting with you if you're fighting, especially Thank on school brother. choice issues. So keep that up. We'll keep an eye on your school, on the uh, congressional district lines and see where these are actually drawn. And uh, you keep us up to date on that. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? Did you uh, get a well, turkey? Well, you better you better have the turkey ready or else well, you're hey, in you trouble, know, man. This, this, you know, the shortage, we got the shortages going around the country because, you know, the gas prices are, are skyrocketing. We can't get things off the dock. Yeah. So, yeah, we got our turkey uh, months ago. Okay, <laughs> good, good, good. All right. That, that's good because, yeah, it's just going up. I mean, uh, Biden's investigating gas prices, but I, I, maybe we should investigate oh turkey prices because that's double, too. Hey, so, clueless. Hey, well, he, yeah, yeah, he might cut off the turkey pipeline like he did the peace <laughs> count, so we better make sure that... We got our turkey. Yeah. There you go. All right, uh, Walt. Hey, when you're when you're coming through, let's get you in studio here soon, and maybe even yeah. we'll do some uh, questions for listeners at some point. And open up the phones. People always like that. I, I wish you and your family a, a, a happy Thanksgiving coming up. Get a little rest because once we get through uh, the next month or so, it's really really go time when it comes to this campaign coming up. So we'll talk with you soon, Walt. Appreciate it. Oh, okay, brother. Take care and God bless. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to you too and your family. All right, you as well. Sponsored this segment of the show is Sportsman's Bar and Grill. A uh, great time to head over there right now, or maybe wait till the end of the 5 o'clock hour to the end of the show, uh, because it is Thursday night football. Uh, and, and this is a great place to watch football. If, you, if you're into that, they've got 17 TVs, voted best sports bar 13 years in a row now. Plus, uh, Thursday night football, they've got $3 sliders with two toppings plus $3 uh, hard seltzers and Mexican beer. One of my favorite places in town, a place that I frequent quite often, and uh, go check out and get the sliders. $3 slider right now is a, a great deal, especially, especially with, uh, with the price of meat, right? You can't even do this at home anymore. So go check out Sportsman's Bar and Grill up at a hospital in the Bashes Shopping Center. All right. Go ahead and get your comments in. I would like to get to those here about 5.30. Uh, email your comments. If I don't get to them today, I'll get to them tomorrow. So just you got to get them in. Get them in right now. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com, and I'll bring Olivia on for that. Next hour, I want to get more into Biden's fumbles here, and it is his push to uh, tackle the higher gas prices. He's totally clueless on this. Plus, I've got an ex-Arizona county official getting jail time for public fund misuse. Well, I'm glad that they got this guy, but wait till you hear about what the punishment is and the payback is. We'll talk about that. And I've also got this survey that I never got to through the whole week. I've been trying to get to this one about Thanksgiving uh, and, and the, I don't know, the turmoil you might find at some homes, probably not ours, right, or yours, uh, but at some homes when it comes to the vac- vaccinated versus the unvaccinated, especially as COVID hysteria ramps up once again and, and common sense continues to die. <laughs> we'll talk about that next hour, folks. So don't go anywhere. we got Fox News coming up top there. Plus, uh, of course, Rittenhouse, too. We'll, we'll work on getting to that. Uh, stick around back in just a few minutes. This is the Jeff Orovitz Show on 97.1 The Big Talker. All right, an ex-county official gets some jail time. I'll hit up on that. Uh, plus, I, I don't know, holiday hell is what this survey is saying. We'll talk about the upcoming holidays. Another hour of the show starts now.
Welcome back. Jeff Horvitz here. Uh, if you got a comment, love to hear from you. I've already got a couple of text and email comments I'm going to get to here for the remainder of the show. I thought I was going to have Olivia come on in and read some of these comments, but uh, it turns out that she is doing something with drama, like a drama club thing, which is which is perfect for her, right? <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll take care of the comments today. So keep those coming. Uh, you can email uh, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Or you can send in your comment on the Just Wireless text and listener line, 877-971-3971. And Just Wireless with their awesome location right across from the Flagstaff Mall uh, to fix your smartphone. Just drop it off. Don't spend the money. You don't have to buy a new phone. They'll help you out there at Just Wireless right across from the Flagstaff Mall. And send me a text, 877-971-3971. Sponsor this portion of the show is Nova Home Loans, and I actually have something on housing I want to get to here in just a second, so this is perfect. Uh, It's no secret that mortgage rates are at historic lows, and if you miss this opportunity to save by refinancing, you may be kicking yourself later. Uh, With rates this low and skyrocketing home values, you you can tap into newfound equity to get the cash you need to make home improvements, consolidate revolving debt. Uh, or for any reason. So whether you have perfect credit or not so perfect credit, you need to call Kim Dawson at Nova Home Loans. Kim knows how to find the program that works specifically for your situation. And since Nova is both a bank and a broker, she has the flexibility to shop for the best rates and terms for you. Call Kim Dawson, whether you're purchasing a new home or you're refinancing an existing home uh, before interest rates move. Kim will even waive the lender fees on all VA loans. Call Kim Dawson at Nova Home Loans at 928-310-6458. That's 928-310-6458. Nova Home Loans, the girl who gets it done, 928-310-6458. Nova Home Loans, NMLS 3087, subject to credit approval. Some restrictions may apply in equal housing opportunity. Speaking of housing, uh, Fran and Flagstaff sent in an email, Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com, and it points out uh, or or notes that, hey, did you see that there's a large affordable housing project coming to downtown Flagstaff? Will this actually help the cost of housing in Flagstaff? And Flagstaff's facing the same thing that folks all over the place are facing. I I think it was earlier in the week I talked to you about uh, Cottonwood, which is facing an onslaught of of out-of-town, out-of-state buyers, which is driving up the pricing and people having trouble finding homes in Cottonwood. I know Prescott, that you're dealing with that. It's, It's basically everywhere is seeing the spike because why wouldn't you want to get out of some of these crazy cities or these states that are being run uh, just into the ground. So people are fleeing and there's only so many housing, uh, units, only so much real estate. So, uh, Fran points out new housing project. I I looked this up. Uh, they're pushing this in downtown Flagstaff, a so-called 100%, (laughs) 100% affordable housing project, uh, and a parking garage in downtown Flagstaff, which, is supposed to be online maybe in, in in like another year or so. Sometime in in maybe they're starting in June of twenty twenty two. I mean it's, these things take a, a long time to 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 develop. Um, one hundred forty six units, ninety seven parking spaces. Uh, Fran, do I think it's going to have an impact on housing affordability in Flagstaff? No, I mean a, a little bit, but by the time you have all these units get on there, uh, I don't know if these are. I, I would imagine these are just rental units. Uh, I don't know too much about the project. But there's such a shortage of rental units right now. And most of the rental units that have been built in recent years, you, as you know, uh, are the high-rise type things. And that's what this will be. High-rise by Flagstaff standards is four or five or six stores or whatever. Uh, they, they just get gobbled up. But most of the units have been geared towards uh, college kids and, and students and, and higher-end uh, uh, um, client, clients, I guess you, you could say. Uh, as far as pricing, you know, $2,500 and this and that. So this is supposed to be geared towards people, if you're like a family of four making sixty five grand or something like that. Uh, it's like it's subsidized housing. So I, I want everybody to keep in mind, I mean, this, these are all done with um, housing tax credits usually. So what happens is, you know, it's, 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 it's tax credits. So it's, in, in a way, somebody's paying for it. 
<laughs> Isn't that always the case? So will it be affordable? I I, I, I hope so, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, what's affordable in Flagstaff, I guess, uh, would, would be the big question. By, by the way, I actually was speaking of housing in Northern Arizona University. I told you yesterday that more and more people are going to online and uh, NAU is seeing I guess, a decline in in-person education and more people are starting to do online. I think that this will be the trend going forward. But I did, my, my daughter Isabel is actually going to NAU and I went over there to have dinner with her uh, last night uh, because believe it or not, if you live on campus, you have to buy their meal plan. Now, this is the biggest racket. I'll tell you what, you have to buy the meal plan if they're a freshman and living on campus, right? And the smallest meal plan is 10 meals a day. So... Isabel works at a, not only does she do work here on the, on the show, but she works at a, 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 a restaurant in town. So she gets a certain amount of food, plus the place she's in has a kitchen, and then she's got to try to squeeze in 10 meals a day, the minimum that NAU will allow you to get as a freshman. And it's just wasteful. It, it averages out, I don't know, we did the math on it, it was definitely – more than 13 bucks a, a meal, you know, and, and she's struggling to eat the meals. I mean, this is wasteful on so many levels because it's wasteful from a money perspective, but it also teaches the kids uh, to waste. They're trying to just fill their bellies with something. So they're not wasting the money because if you don't use the meal plan, it just goes away. You have, you have 10 a week or whatever, and, and that's it. Uh, but I went over there and it was, it was good to have dinner anyway. It was, it was good, good food. And uh, they have all these robots going all over the place, delivering the food even. Uh, so, so you don't even have to get in. I saw a couple of kids coming down from their dorm. It looked like it's the first time they've been out for, for like weeks. And the, the robot just goes to their door and you, you, you wave your phone. So you order it online. Uh, you, you, you wave, then you come down. It, it, it notifies you when the food arrives at the door. It doesn't bring it to your actual room in a dorm or whatever. So the, the, the students, the kids or whatever, they come down, they do like a, a phone thing, wave their, their smartphone by the robot, and it opens a trunk, like a cooler type thing, and you take out your food. And this person went back up. I, don't, I think it's the first time. So basically, there's no human inter- interaction. You could basically do online school, stay in your dorm, and have robots. And the robots are going all over the place uh, on campus. I, I tried to block a few. tried to tackle one. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. All right. Love your comments, folks. Uh, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Uh, or you can send it to the Just Wireless text line, 877-971-3971. Uh, text from Roger here. Uh, 877-9713-971. Didn't Dems call for violence on Republicans during the Trump administration? What hypocrites. They look more like spoiled brats every day. And uh, uh, Roger was referring to, I, I covered this quite heavily yesterday, and Congressman Paul Gosar was on the show last week uh, explaining his video, this anime, anime video, in, in which uh, his face is imposed over the samurai warrior, and it swoops down and it uh, strikes the back of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez with a sword, shows the, the slice mark. And uh, he got cens- censured yesterday, which when you censure someone, it's basically the biggest smack on the wrist, the biggest statement you can make against someone in, in Congress. Uh, the next step would be ex- expulsion. And I, I went over this list yesterday of uh, what people had been censured for and, and expulsed, uh, expelled for in the past. So Congressman Gosar was, was censured and he's removed from the committees that he, that he serves on. Um, and that, that's what Roger here is referring to. What do you think? Uh, have you seen the video? Um, is there hypocrisy? Is it a bridge too far? I'd love your thoughts. Send those in. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Yesterday, I mentioned that two Republicans crossed over to vote uh, to censure Congressman Gosar. It's lar- mostly a party line vote. All the Democrats voted to censure him, and all the Republicans, except for two, uh, voted not to censure him. And I did call it right. I didn't know. I, I, I wasn't able to look this up during the show yesterday. But the one re, the, one of the Republicans I mentioned that I thought would censure him was Liz Cheney, uh, who I don't think is going to get reelected. I don't know what you think. Uh, and Adam Kinzinger. Uh, I'm not sure what state he's from. Uh, both did that. All right. Um, X County. Ex-Arizona County official gets jail for public funds misuse. This is actually a Fox 10 article that came out. I mentioned this to you a couple months back that this guy finally got caught. So he was a former Coconino County official. And then he went over to Navajo County to oversee their health department. He was sentenced yesterday, just yesterday to nine months in jail 
for misusing public money to cover more than $84,000 in personal expenses over a six, how, wow, six year span. How did this get away with this for six years? You know? So as Jeffrey Preston Lee, 47 years old, He pleaded guilty last month to one felony count of theft and two felony counts of violating his duties as a custodian of public money. He did a plea agreement, called for probation on two of the three convictions and restitution payments of $82,500 to Coconino County and $1,700 to to Navajo County. Where's my my calculator here? Let's check this out here. $82,500 plus... Um, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I lost it. $1,700 equals $84,200. So that's what he spent. That's what he took. So he's paying back the same exact amount. What about, what about the, like the interest and penalties? I'm a little surprised by that. If I, I, maybe I'm not comparing the same thing here, but if you didn't pay your taxes to the IRS, for example, over a six year period, and it it, it came out to $84,000. I mean, what would be the, the fees and penalties on that? <laughs> $100,000? I mean, I don't know what the answer is, but it would be a significantly ma- a larger uh, amount of money than the original amount. So here this guy, he pleads guilty, and now he's uh, he, he got the plea, plea agreement. He has to pay back basically what he stole, because that's what it is. He stole the money, and then he has to serve nine months in jail. Okay, nine months in jail, six years of committing this crime, $84,000, paying back $84,000. I I don't know. Here's what he did. So he, this guy, former Coconino County official, uh, official worker in Navajo County, 237 purchases on personal items like electronics, camping, uh, camping products, tools, weight loss supplements, uh, the audit showed about 40 of his purchases, including including gift cards, were made on Christmas Eve. That was a good Christmas for some people. Uh, New Year's Eve uh, weekends are when Lee was on vacation. Uh, Lee falsified reports to cover his tracks, according to the prosecutors. I don't know. Do you think, what do you think the sentence should have been for this guy who stole your tax money to the tune of $84,000 over a six-year period, He's getting nine months in jail, and he's just got to pay back the eighty-four thousand. It should have been a lot more. Should he have to pay back one hundred sixty thousand dollars? Should he have to walk around wearing a sign and say "I stole one hundred forty or eighty-four thousand dollars"? It just seems like it's uh, I don't know, I don't know. Just food for thoughts, folks. Eight, uh, go ahead and send me a send me an email. Uh, talk with Jeff at iCloud dot com. Talk with Jeff at iCloud dot com. Uh, okay, uh, Yellen. Let's switch national here. Janet Yellen who um, is the Treasury Secretary, who worked at the Federal Reserve prior to that. So she's been all over the place, and she's just, it's just merged into one. She says that Biden's $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill demands raising of the debt limit as, quote, as soon as possible. This is an article from the Daily Wire. So here, the, the ink's not even dry on this thing. What did he sign this thing? Uh, Biden signed the, at least they used the Daily Wire at least, uses the correct amount. You know, this has been a pet peeve of mine. This is a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, and everybody in the media keeps calling it a trillion. I think it's going to be more like one five, one six, one eight uh, trillion, but we're rounding errors. But at least they they titled this correctly. So Janet Yellen warned House Speaker Nancy Pelosi that the passage of the $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill uh, bipartisan. What, What did 11 Republicans vote for this thing? I mean, come on. Uh, Anyway, signed by Biden on Monday, demands that lawmakers act swiftly on the debt limit. Quote, yesterday, the president signed the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which appropriates $118 billion for the Highway Trust Fund, her letter explained. Uh, These funds must be transferred into the Highway Trust Fund within one month after the enactment of the legislation, and the transfer will be completed on December 15th. Promptly thereafter, the Fed's Funds will be invested in non-marketable treasury securities subject to the debt limit. While I have a high degree of confidence that Treasury will be able to finance the U.S. government through December 15th and complete the highway trust fund investment, there are scenarios in which Treasury would be left with insufficient remaining resources. This is like what you know. You don't. You try to draw a check on your account. It, it bank will just tell the merchant insufficient funds, and and you won't be able to buy it. But if you're the government, if you have insufficient funds or what she's calling insufficient remaining resources, 
also known as folks, we don't have enough money to do this, insufficient resources to continue to finance the operations of the U.S. government beyond this date. She continued, as the federal government's cash flow is subject to unavoidable variability, I will continue to update Congress as more information becomes available. Uh, It just hurts my head, I'll tell you what. So basically, let me translate that to you. They pass Congress, bipartisan with 11 Republicans, pass $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, and they don't got the money, <laughs> right? That, that's, a, that's about what it is. That's why I said, you pass this infrastructure bill, what should happen is a bill should be sent to every man, woman, and child in this country for the amount that it actually costs. You just be upfront with Americans and say, hey, we want to pass this $1.2 trillion infrastructure package because we need bridges, we need this and that, and whatever the heck else they've promised. Oh, we need, uh, like Walt Blackman was saying last hour, if you missed his interview, uh, we need charging stations. You may not have electricity uh, nearby, but you, you get a charging station. It's going to be like the Soviet Union. There's going to be a charging station that's not hooked up to anything. But anyway, we, we, hey, we're going to send you a bill. You want all this stuff? Here's what it's going to cost. I'll do the math there in the break. I think it was 600 bucks a person or something. Maybe that seems kind of low. Uh, so everybody, you get a bill, you pay it, and we're going to get all this great stuff. Anyway, your thoughts, love to hear from you. Send me an email, talkwithjeff at iCloud.com. Talkwithjeff at iCloud.com. You can also send a message on the uh, Just Wireless text line. I'd love to hear from you there. 877 I'm going to come back with a couple of text comments here in just a second. Sponsor this segment of the show is Sun State Tech. And since 2007, Sun State Tech has been helping Arizona businesses and municipalities operate quickly and safely. They handle cybersecurity, and that's pretty important nowadays, right? Managed IT services plus voice over IP and, and much, much more. Uh, let the experts at Sun State Tech keep your company safe and moving faster than the competition. Go visit them right now. Tell them that I sent you. You can visit them at sunstatetech.com. That's sunstatetech.com. Coming back with some of your comments. Plus, I'll get to the uh, turkey survey here, the, uh, uh, this, this poll about family members gathering vaccinated versus unvaccinated. Some of these numbers might surprise you. Hang tight. Back in a minute. Listening to the Jeff Orovitz Show. You're listening to the Jeff Orovitz Show. Be part of the program by calling 877 971 3971. All right, I got some of your comments coming up, uh, several text comments. Uh, sponsored this segment of the show. Our last sponsor today here. Uh, Longtime sponsor here on the program and somebody that I have used for many, many years uh, for my all my insurance needs. Uh, Hakes Insurance Agency, they've provided my family's insurance, like I said, for many, many years. Uh, if you're looking for insurance, if, if you need renter's insurance, if you're a landlord and you need insurance for your rental properties, uh, if you've got commercial properties, they've got insurance for that. Then they've got all the, the, the kind of basics in the insurance world as far as your, your homeowner's insurance. Uh, your auto insurance, things like that, uh, and also flood insurance for folks living in flood-prone areas. Uh, that's Flagstaff. That's in the Verde Valley. It's all over the place, really. There's um, risks of flood. Uh, so give Hakes Insurance Agency a call. Tell him that I sent you. I, I, I'm, I'm confident that he's going to be able to help you out. He'll review your existing policy, see if you're maybe paying too much. Maybe you don't have enough coverage. Who knows? you gotta, you got to take a look at this stuff and let uh, Dan Hakes over at Hakes Insurance Agency do that for you. Here's the number. 928-226-1611. That's 928-226-1611. Or you can visit them by going to Hakes. That's H-A-K-E-S. Hakesinsurance.com. I didn't get to the Rittenhouse uh, trial at all. I kept saying I'm going to get to it because there's really nothing to get to. Uh, the jury went home or whatever for the night. Still have not uh, come up with a verdict on the Rittenhouse uh, trial. So, we will wait and see tomorrow, Friday. I don't know. Maybe they're waiting till it's dark on a Friday night and everybody's uh, really gathered. I don't know. I mean, it's it's that's what a what a heck of a job there to uh, to, to sit there and then be worried about the threats that are that are surely to come. Uh, apparently, an MSNBC reporter or uh, something like that was was trailing behind a juror's bus and following them. And, and so now MSN MSN is um, 
kicked out of the courthouse for coverage. I'm not even sure why they have. I, I don't know. It's, it's, they've got all these people in there. I, I, it's just it's it's just really weird these trials, and you never know which direction they're going to go. Uh, but yeah, MSNBC cut, they're they're cut out because they were trailing the bus or something like that. Uh, more COVID madness going on. This this one is just a gem here. And this is an article from MSN. Uh, Irish Deputy Prime Minister says the 5% of the nation's unvaccinated population is causing a problem. <laughs> that, so, so Ireland is one of the most highly vaccinated uh, countries in the world, right? And they're having a heck of a spike right now. So what do you do when you're an official and you're so far down the road of the narrative that uh, it's, it's just the unvaccinated fault? That's what it is. That you just keep going with it. Yeah, it's got, surely it's got to be. The, wasn't there a time when we were told when we reached 70% or 65, 70, 75, even 80% that would be considered herd immunity? Well, many places are well beyond that. And out of that 5%, how many people have gotten COVID? I mean, what is this number? I mean, wh- what does it have to be, 100%? So now Ireland is imposing a midnight curfew on bars. Because if you're there at 11.59 p.m., um, COVID won't spread. Midnight? Whew. It's crazy time. COVID runs rampant. So Ireland will impose a midnight curfew on bars because that worked so well the past 24 months. Restaurants and nightclubs from November 18th as the country sees a new surge in COVID-19 cases despite having one of the highest vaccination rates in the world. CNN's Becky Anderson sat down with Lee Veradikar, Ireland's deputy prime minister, to discuss it. CNN article. There you go. Another one from CNN, the functional definition of fully vaccinated may be changing soon now that the first full rounds of immunizations are wearing off. <laughs> yeah, if it's all hooked up to an IV drip here pretty soon. I got a text here from Roy. You can send me a text on the Just Wireless text line anytime, 877-971-3971. You're talking about Barnes & Noble closing soon, bookstore. Um, let, me, let me stop right there. This was... Um, let me see if I can pull this article. This was from yesterday. I guess Barnes & Noble has a store in Flagstaff. Yeah, and they're closing, and a, a new Goodwill is going to be taking that spot. Um, and anyway, it's talking about that closing soon, and, and I remember Barnes & Noble when that first opened. Um, there were people protesting it's going to be the end of bookstores, and I mentioned that yesterday. They're out there. You're going to kill the bookstores. Barnes & Noble's coming, and I guess it did happen because as um, – I'm sorry, Roy. As Roy points out here, they may have contributed to putting McGaw's newsstand out of business, um, but Bookman's is still around. I said I couldn't remember any bookstores, and and you're right. I totally forgot. I go to Bookman's, Roy. Uh, Bookman's is that used kind of book place. Uh, I think they're. I think it's an Arizona company. I could be wrong on that, though. I know there's one in Flagstaff, and people go there and trade in their old books, and they get credit. I go there, my kids go there. I actually really like and enjoy Bookman's. I pick up a lot of books from there, and they have um, DVDs and CDs and and eight tracks, I guess, or something like that. I hear like vinyls come back. People are doing vinyl and even cassettes now. I guess. People are getting into that. Cassettes are awful. Vinyl sounds pretty good, though. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I think you're right. Perhaps uh, could have contributed to that. But that's that's kind of life. That's the market. And now Bookman's is leaving because they're saying it's because of the lease. But I don't know how many people go into the bookstore. How many people have a, a device on their phone? or what? How many people read? How many people know how to read anymore? <laughs> you know, obviously, we've got an education problem in this country. We can't do math. Uh, so surely there's probably a lot of people that just don't buy books either. I, I mean, that would be um, my guess. Hey, before I forget, because I have a bad habit of forgetting to follow through on a few things, uh, the $1.2 trillion infrastructure package, I'm doing this right now, uh, 120000 $1.2 million, $12 million, $120 million, uh, billion, 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 $1.2 trillion, divided by uh, $360 million. Americans, that may be a little high. I think it's three thirty, but it'll be close enough. Uh, it's thirty three hundred bucks. So every American uh, man, woman, and child should send in three hundred three thousand three hundred thirty three dollars um, to pay for this infrastructure package. Yeah, that's right. So I, I I just wanted to get to that because I promised you last segment I'd do that math during the the break. So. As I was saying, Janet Yellen is saying, hey, we're going to have to raise the debt limit. So we got to raise the debt limit to pay for something uh, that really we should have had the money to pay for. We should have been maintaining our infrastructure. So here we're raising the debt limit. And I think if you were to send a $3,300 bill, if my math is correct, uh, to every American, I mean, just think about that. That's what this package, that's what this is really going to cost you, plus interest and all that and probably inflation because they're going to have to 
pump into so many goods and services. Uh, so a family of four, you know, it's costing you $13,200, but don't worry, Janet Yellen's going to roll over uh, the platinum coin. Uh, let's see, a text from question mark here. Don't have a name. 877-971-3971. Um, hi, Jeff. Great work. Thank you. Keep it up. Just a suggestion. Change the word P-O'd uh, when describing the school board parents to something classier like irate, disturbed, incensed, ballistic, etc. Uh, Olivia or Angela probably have some better choices to, to soldier on. Um, thank you for that. Um, I don't have a name here. So thank you for that text. Yeah, I've been saying, I actually made a, a point today with Walt Blackman because I was saying that the country, the people are voting like in, in a couple weeks ago in Tuesday's elections, it was the, I was saying it was the PO'd, you know what that word is, um, moms and moms of America are finally stepping up. So she doesn't want, want me to use that word. And that's fine. So I actually, when Walt Blackman came on today, um, he used the word. <laughs> so there's a lot worse words out there. And actually, if I ask my wife, Angela, to come up with some better choices, um, she may come up with some even angrier words because Americans are, are so PO'd over what's going on in our country, what's going on with these crazy out of control school boards that they, they just, they're, they're losing it, you know, and they should because these folks are messing with our kids. So thank you. And she says soldier on it. I appreciate that text comment. Uh, 877-9713-971. If you have any text comments, I'd love to hear from you. And that's of course our just wireless text line. And I appreciate everyone who sends comments into us all of the time. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, survey <laughs> with four minutes left. I did it again. Uh, so COVID hell. Three in five Americans, this is a, a survey from studyfinds.org, three in five Americans banning unvaccinated relatives from family gatherings. This is a survey of 2,000 U.S. residents conducted by one poll on November 2nd, examined how the COVID-19 vaccine has impacted people's relationships with their loved ones ahead of the holidays this year. According to results, two in three respondents feel they cannot go home for the holidays without getting vaccinated first. Of the 65% who are fully vaccinated, nearly 6 in 10, that's 58%, uh, have, well, 6 in 10 wouldn't be, nearly 6 in 10, 58% have reportedly cut off family members who refuse to get the vaccine. Meanwhile, 63% don't feel comfortable inviting unvaccinated relatives to their parties. I don't know, you can ask people for their vax stat when they, when they come over. Do you, or do you have a story like this to share? I mean, are you going to Thanksgiving? And I can't wait next week. Looking forward to some time off with the family. Uh, have you gotten notification from, because we all have families that are like different than us, right? I mean, I have family members. There's probably more, there might be more liberals in, in the entire family than there are conservatives. There, there really might be. And you, you go to these things and I just try not to talk politics around the turkey, you know? I don't want to... I just don't want to do it. I don't want to deal with it. Maybe it's because I do this every day. But do you have a story to share? Have you gotten notice from some family member that says, hey, I need to see your Vax card before we uh, come in? I'd love to hear that. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Uh, the study also revealed that 72% of vaccinated respondents don't think they could ever get some of their family members to understand the importance of the vaccine. On the other hand, 14% of the survey respondents don't plan to ever get the shot themselves. There you go. There you go. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Though. I'd love to hear from you. Um, I will be taking some time off next week, and I'm really um, looking forward to it because Thanksgiving is one of my favorite times of the year, and it's a good time to recharge and uh, get away from it all. And Maybe the country will calm down a little bit, although we'll, we'll, we'll look tomorrow and wait tomorrow for the Rittenhouse um, verdict. If it goes the way I think it should go, they will acquit him, and I think the city, that city and maybe other cities will come unglued. Uh, but maybe everybody will chill out over the weekend um, right before uh, we all go away for Thanksgiving. Continuing on with the survey, final thought, 38% of the unvaccinated people say they remain in contact with their vaccinated loved ones, and 58% of the same group add that they're still welcome at family get-togethers. study also suggests that the vaccine has played a role in the workforce the way it has in the family relationships. There you go. All right, uh, be back tomorrow. I've got Bruce Sidlinger tomorrow. I think I also have Glenn Lease from WT Wealth Management. See if I can get Olivia in here because she reads these better, right? She's so, she's a lot of fun when she reads these comments. If you want to get a comment in, I'll get to it tomorrow on Friday's show. 
Go ahead and email me, talkwithjeff at iCloud.com. That's talkwithjeff at iCloud.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Go to talkwithjeff.com. Subscribe to that. That'll be my Christmas present. I appreciate that. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great, safe night. Your house needs gutter helmet. Installing over your existing gutters allows for water to flow freely. This is Jeff Orvitz for Gutter Helmet. For over 40 years, Gutter Helmet has been the proven solution to protect homeowners from dangerous ladders. Let Gutter Helmet protect you today and for years to come with their triple lifetime warranty. Seniors, military, and first responders get the biggest discounts. For a limited time, you can save up to 30%. Call Gutter Helmet today at 928-318-6555.